Wow, wow. I'll be careful. You'll be dark side. <laughs> okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a look at the, uh, well, I don't even know the number, but this is a big old wave of Hasbro Star Wars Black Series. And I was gonna have a uh, kind of a, a, a gag here with some bread and some butter, and I realized I don't have any bread. And not a lot of butter, actually, but now I do. Eh? Huh? Eight individual Star Wars Black series. If you order this case, you get eight unique characters. It's, <laughs> has it been a while since we've had that? Well, okay, Ponda Baba and Dr. Evazen were in that PulseCon Cantina Showdown set. But if you skipped on that set or haven't opened it, like somebody else you may know, this is your first chance to lay flippers on it. And then this Leia is also available on the Power of the Force card. Then there's some obvious reuse, some not so obvious reuse some new sculpts, some stuff going on. And looking at the package, it's what we're used to with Black Series Windows, showing everything you get in the package, the accessories. And as we go along, I am loving the color coding more and more. It's a different color for each movie or trilogy or TV show. Oh, got it. No, that won't work. They gotta go together, right? And then maybe this is, oh, yep, there you go. On the back, you get that same artwork with some bios, some backgrounds for each character. There's the number that they are within their own color scheme. Finnick is one, and then down at the bottom, you have your warnings. Small parts may be generated. Put them in your mouth, they multiply. Let's <laughs> not do that. First needed to maneuver past his pasty-faced Major Domo, the Twi'lek, Bib Fortuna. On the other sides, just a little bit of window, a lot of black, Star Wars logo, those colors. On the top, lots of window. On the bottom, there's more legalese, there's the barcodes. But let's start with the Jetta Patrol Trooper because it has the most obvious reuse. All the plastic comes away from the cardboard, so you can put this where it needs to go, this where it, well, I need the figure first. This where it needs to go. I am not gonna lie, I love the new Stormtrooper mold. Some people think that the single elbows and the single knees are a downgrade. I guess in that aspect, I can't disagree. I can't disprove that, but damn, it makes for a nice natural looking silhouette. It looks like an actual person is inside the suit of armor. And it also makes it feel more solid when it's standing on the shelf. It's been a while since you've shown me what you got, version one Stormtrooper. Hmm actually beats it. But it's not gonna beat this. <laughs> Stormtrooper kicking his own ass come over to here. Uh. It is a little crotchy though. Makes the torso look long, legs a little short, but it could just be the armor itself, you know? Oh, very tight ankles. Now on the original release, there was a problem with the glue, the helmet, and the head. There is a fully sculpted noggin under there, unpainted. Problem is, they glued it in some weird spots and it would distort the helmet. On my new one, I don't seem to have that problem, but I can't speak for everybody else's. I, this is the only one I've seen. So maybe they fixed the problem, maybe they didn't. They also added this pauldron that is just around the neck and then the strap goes below the arm. And it's nice, it floats, it gets out of the way of articulation if you want to. Well, okay, with the helmet being there, you can't really tilt that way but you can still tilt the other. And it looks nice with the wrinkles. Looks like there's some actual pull to this strap where it's buttoned. And it's clean. The whites, the blacks. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a lot of bleed here and there. Okay, inside the joint. But it also has a sheen to it like it's the armor from the movies. I'd like the eye lenses to be shinier though to make them look like actual lenses. For articulation, there seems to be a dumbbell at the top of the neck, ball at the bottom. That's their new standard setup. And it works really well for these bucket heads because you get more movement than you think you would. Just some tilt, some rotation. Uh, I like it. Also, another thing they've developed lately and it works really well, the shoulder bell is on a loop that goes around the shoulder. So it's softer, it gets out of the way, but it rotates with the shoulder. There's also butterfly joints under there. It goes forward, goes back. Hinge, out. Hinge and swivel at the elbow. Like I showed, it goes up to here. Swivels, rotation at the wrist, and then an up and down hinge on a trigger finger hand. Ball joint mid torso. Is this? Yeah, this is a separate piece on top of the actual body part so nice range these are also rubbery gets up out of the way for the ball coming out to the hip goes to there there and comes out to here which is not shabby for a fully armored character rotation at the thigh nicely hidden behind this armor plate hinge and swivel at the knee too it comes up to there and then rotates back and forth ankle goes really far back, crashes into there, but still forward, and then front facing pin for rocker. Also comes with this rifle. I think we've seen this before. It has the tripod that actually doesn't come down. It's just sculpted on there, but good detail, no paint. 
it's actually cast in this grayish plastic. The other newly sculpted part is this backpack, and I have no idea what this is. I probably should have researched that. It looks like he's carrying around his own sound system. Maybe he's got the tape decks or the turntables down in here, the music, got the speakers blaring out the back. He can do an impromptu show anytime he wants, throwing up this tarp. <laughs> I'm always impressed when I see little things like that with some paint on them. Here, here, this yellow, and then even the backpack or the rack underneath the backpack and even a spot to fit directly onto the pack, you know, the pause and the record. It goes up over the pauldron. On the artwork, it shows it going under or, well, it at least doesn't show it going over. I don't think there's any way to put it under there without <laughs> pinching a lot of stuff. They even left a cutout for the, the belt thermal detonator on the back. It kind of droops back and sags, but that also makes it feel like there's some weight to it. And then to finish that off, there is this antenna. It's got some twist right here to it. It splits off onto another little smaller antenna. And this is how he broadcasts his set to the rest of the city. He can get some range with this. And while it adds some weight to the back, because of how close it gets to the figure itself, it doesn't seem to want to pull it back. In fact, I try to knock it down and it bounces back. Well, you get too far, of course, if you go like here. Oh, balance sucks. Way better than I thought it'd be. The next with the most obvious reuse is Migs Mayfeld Morak. <laughs> and doesn't take up a lot of room. And before we get too far, why is he packaged with the helmet on? Maybe get those troop builders? Well, okay, to show that it could be a troop builder, I guess. And like I said, there is reuse here. The body is from the solo movie Mud Trooper. Well, Han in the Mud Trooper gear. But then the helmet comes from the tank driver. Same, well, okay, never mind. It may be a different sculpt because of the size. They had to make it bigger to make it removable. And in fact, I'd almost call Miggs's helmet more detailed. It's got a sharper sculpt to it. It does change the proportions a little bit, but that's just what it comes down to when you're putting a plastic shell over a plastic head. Maybe they went with Migs first because he doesn't have any hair. <laughs> and that's usually the biggest problem with removable helmets is hair. That's a nice snap. Stays on, can move around, not a problem. They've also added some wear and tear to the several places on the armor. There's even a little bit here on this red and yellow part. This is actually not accurate to Mayfeld's uniform. That was actually on Mando's, I think. Which I'm guessing is a future release. Swap this head with maybe the Target exclusive Din Djarin unmasked head. Change the name on the package. Uh, Baboom. And since I've been dancing around it, the Bill Burr head is not bad at all. It's a bald guy. He's got some scruff. But it seems kind of... Uh, cockeyed. This ear is higher. This eye is higher. Here, it looks good. And even here, I could get away with. But both sides together... Hmm. Maybe mine is warped because I haven't seen any other... Well, I, actually, if you see these at the store, you can't look at the eyes or the shape of the face because they have the helmet on. Is that why they did that? But going over articulation, there's a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Look way up, slightly down. There's the tilt. Swivel, arm rotates all the way around. Shoulder pad is glued on close enough to where it just rides into the body whenever you hinge the shoulder up. Hinge the swivel at the elbow, comes up past 90. Rotates, twist at the wrist, up and down hinge on a trigger finger. Ball joint hidden by the armor, not bad hula hoop. Softness down here allows for the ball at the hip to come up to there. Back, kind of gets stuck. Out. Same thing, but not, yeah. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, since this reuse of an older figure comes all the way up. Hinge at the ankle, goes all the way back. There we go. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there's the bucket. And then there's also this blaster, which again, I think we have seen several times before. Hand is fairly tight. There's a groove at the bottom of the grip that gets stuck right there, but you push, you twist. Oh, and I love that scene, so I'm happy with that. You can also put it in the holster and it Goes, oh yeah, kind of locks in, not falling out. Keeping with the reuse train, it's hard to pick between these two rapscallions, but uh, let's go with Ponda Baba first. It has more reuse than a basin. And I like this, mostly because I've wanted Walrus Man in my display for a long, long time. And while I've had the cantina set for several weeks, now that I have the singles in hand, oh, 
right out of the package. And I'll eventually open that, but that's okay because Ponda Baba and Dr. Avazin were in Rogue One and A New Hope. So I have two places, right? It all works out. Like I said, repurposed body, and most of this is from Ceremony Luke. Same ridges on the arms, same overlay, same belts and pants and boots, same holster. Different upper torso though, same lower torso with the wrinkles, but it gets slightly smoother and it doesn't have this open flap. It has the closed flap. Is this from something else? I can't remember. Or is this new in order to give an older figure that ball joint at the bottom, dumbbell at the top. Because Luke doesn't have that. It's, oh, wait. Well, it's at least a separate piece. Here you get some actual movement. So the new parts are the hands. They have the furriness on the back. The Cantina Showdown set actually has swappable flippers for here. But with the flipper, you can't grab a gun. <laughs> so this makes sense. And then, of course, there's the head, that unique awesome looking alien head. The beautiful walrus looking head. And there's actually a lot of pain involved here. Well, okay, first they smudged up the jacket. They have these dirty spots to it that feels very um, staged <laughs> or very deliberate, but it works. I don't have a lot of problem with that. On the hands, there's also some extra paint to bring out the detail of the sculpted fur. Well, I say fur, it's more like a hair to match this hair up here. But before we get to the extra paint hits here, they could have probably just left it in the base plastic, but there's also a layer of paint. I don't think it's part of the plastic, but it gives it a lot of depth. And then the dots up on top to up the accuracy and give it an even more organic feel. There's the shininess of the black that I wanted on the Stormtrooper. And then a completely different color down here on the, uh, you know, the, the mouth. I've seen some people comment on the proportions where the head looks really big. I think that's accurate. Going over articulation, again, dumbbell joint at the top, ball at the bottom for a <laughs> big headed bastard. There is some up, there is some down. There's my tilt. So much emotion can be conveyed just with a little bit of boop. Rotates, pin at the shoulder, rotates around, hinges out. Hinge at the shoulder comes up slightly past 90. Swivel, wrist twists. The cuff is a little deep. It gets in the way slightly, but hey, up and down hinge for a weapon wielding hand. Ball joint mid torso, not shabby. Holster is rubbery, doesn't get in the way of the ball coming out to the hip, comes up to here. Not so much back, runs into his butt out. Oh, winner of the wave so far. How about without the holster? Oh, whoa, look at that. This is also pinned into the leg, but you can still get some swivel out of it. Double knee, oh, Ponda Baba kicking his own. Hinge at the ankle goes back, way forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories comes with this blaster and Mm, I'm gonna get raked over the coals if I miss this, but is this new? If this is reuse, it hasn't been reused very much. Grip kind of angles back, push, twist onto the finger. Oh yeah, good grip. And it gives it a gunslinger feel. Even though this holster was made for Luke's blaster, is that gonna go in or is that gonna go on the outside? Oh yeah, not bad at all. And you can even snap the strap over it. Now let's open Dr. Avazan. Evazan? Evazane? Avazane? Avazan. I don't know. I've always said Dr. Avazan, and I don't know why. And this looks good, which works because we were focused on him more than Ponda Baba. He's the talker, so when he's all, you'll be dead, we were looking him in the eyes. Uh, well, okay, I, sorry, doctor. And I said that this was reuse, and at first I didn't catch it. It was comments on one of the weeklies that pointed out that the legs are actually DJ, which is very clever because you never see the good doctor's legs. And DJs were hidden by this, so they're not really burned into our brain. If we didn't know any better, <laughs> we would think it was just for Dr. Vazen. Although the double knees are a blatant giveaway that it is reuse. If this was an all new sculpt, that would have been a hinge and swivel. That leaves the new parts. Well, okay, <laughs> let's go through this. There's the vest overlay with this beautiful texture on it. And I love the fade from lighter to dark. It gives it an aged look. You can see some hasty stitching sculpted here at the shoulders on both sides. The belt is also part of that and in a different color. So more paints than you think. The silver to the buckle coming around to some pouches on the back. Now they didn't paint the buckles here or the buttons. But again, we're kind of getting used to that on the back of Black Series figures. I don't like it, but we've become accustomed to it. There's a holster on this side, again, part of that overlay, 
but the torso underneath, it seems to be all new sculpt. Well, it has to be, right? I can't think of any other figures I have that has this kind of sloppy look to it. You'll be turned on! Plus, the bottom is sculpted to look like it's kind of shoved behind the belt. The head is, of course, obviously new. It's got the torn up right side, the eye peeking out on the left. Some shading around, almost like there's some stubble. Some 70s chops on the sides. A little bald spot here on top. I wish there was a wash in the hair, just to bring out the detail. It kind of gets lost in that color. The parts that are tripping me up are the arms. They seem new because of the sculpt. I've done a quick comparison with a lot of the collection and it doesn't seem to match anything I've got. Maybe I missed something. But it makes me think it's old because it has this shorter cut for the hinge at the elbow. A lot of the new stuff comes down further so you can get more range out of it. Here it comes up to almost 90. Same time it totally works here. It doesn't stand out, so I, I can't complain. And, well, I'm not complaining about much of the reuse so far, so why would I start now? If it works, it works. And here, it works, just like the legs. Going over articulation, there's the new tried and true dumbbell at the top, ball at the bottom. And do some up, and perform some down. Oh, I love it. Swivel, peg rotates around. Shoulder hinges, oh, past 90. Hinges swivel at the elbow, but the peg seems really, really thin. The first couple of times you go to bend it, it feels like it's flexing forward. So as you bend it, put your finger here, push into the elbow and crank it up. Twisty wristy, up and down hinge on a trigger finger hand. A little hard to maneuver the ball at the mid torso because of the vest overlay. Really, despite all that sculpt, he does have a little crunch and some tilt. Ball coming out to the hip goes better back. Out, oh DJ, swivel at the thigh. Double knee, it takes some pushing because of the bagginess of the leg, but you can get up there. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, front facing pin for rocker. Comes with this blaster, intricate little detail, and very long scopes. Those are familiar. Have I seen that somewhere? Push, there's some twist. Hello? But if you're a holster kind of guy, it goes to, is that right? Okay. It doesn't fall out though, so I, I guess that works. I think it's time to open Princess Leia. You having four Princess Leia. Well, or ceremony Princess Leia. <laughs> they put her arms through, well, okay, that's not as bad as I thought. My initial reaction was it's all new sculpt, but then I looked at the knees, saw they were double, and they may be reuse from the standard Princess Leia. But even if they are, they've been modified to not have boots. Get it over with, yes. Uh, oh, we're looking at the legs under the dress. The cuts seem the same, but they've narrowed the crotch piece, I guess, to make the legs go closer together, give it a more natural feel. And hooray for photo real. <laughs> Good grief. There is a lot of soft goods here, but the sculpted parts you can see, there's the bracelet. It's got some nice little detail to it. The belt is a separate piece on top. Well, there is some kind of cut at the waist, but it definitely does not want to turn. I'm guessing the skirt is wedged into there and then the belt's over it. I really like these. I was worried, but they fall so naturally. They drape. Makes me wish this would do the same thing because this is thicker and it just kind of comes off as flat. <laughs> it doesn't want to lay natural, but you couldn't do all the soft goods out of this because it's more of a, a netting, a sheer material. Not that you can't see the white and the flesh under the skirt. It seems like that wouldn't happen with this being as thick as it is. And then some high heels sculpted on with some nice silver paint. Although it's a little brighter than the belt, which is kind of cast in that gray silver color. Might be a bit swirly and twirly. Then you get to the torso and it is sculpted. It's got some dress wrinkles here and there. The straps coming up and over. The necklace is sculpted around the neck. At that point, you've done this, you've done this. You might as well add a little bit more material to cover the chest and go up over the shoulders. Like it's one dress, you know? Here you get the different sheens and definitely different materials. <laughs> I guess. But we do get that silver again here and here. It's, it's a nice ensemble. I think they did a great job with the head. It's not perfect, but again, like Han, like Luke, those likenesses are just so burned into our brains and our hearts. So when it is slightly off, we see it. It jumps right out at us. The photo reel it does a great job with the makeup, the lips, the eyes, the eyebrows. There's still a shine there, but it almost feels like a sweat or a skin. Then there's the hair. It's sculpted up into this twist. Well, the braid twists around 
and this braid also comes all the way down to here. I do plan on eventually getting an extra and see what I can do here. Much more natural head size, shape, paint, likeness, everything. And her hair is pulled into a ponytail almost the exact same way. So, <laughs> going over articulation, there is a, well, it seems like a dumbbell at the top of the neck. Can look up a bit, can look down. That's what I'm looking for. Swivel. Shoulder rotates around. And I guess you can go all the way. This kind of rides with it, but be aware that that is, see how it's come down a little? It likes to get bunched up. Hinges up to here. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder, past 90. That's better than a vasin. Wrist twist, and then up and down hinge on a trigger finger hand. I think there's something under there, but not much. Ball at the hip comes forward, back, out. Eh, about right there. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, yeah. Boop. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, and because of the high heel, it kind of angles down, but there is a forward-facing pin for Rocker. For accessories, since it's Ceremony Leia, she has to come with an award, and we have seen this before. The golds match, but the strap is a slightly lighter beige, brown, greenish color, something. Maybe Chewie can finally get his headband how's that or how about this it's under there oh and then the other green the return of the jedi bib fortuna who is another character that i've been wanting forever in plastic form in 112 scale plastic form i guess i should say <laughs> easy i know there's been figures of bib fortuna before and this is exactly what i wanted a nice plastic representation of bib fortuna but <laughs> it's kind of obvious this is a traffic cone, right? Don't get me wrong, unless they went the soft goods route, this is the only path ahead of them. And this outer plastic robe is nicely sculpted. It has this hanging down right here in front of it. It's got layers to it coming all the way around. I mean, look at that. That's just cool looking. Seam line running across, wrinkles and waves just working in, making it feel natural. Below that, you get another layer of sculpted plastic pieces. They're split, so if you want some leg movement, you can get a little. Then there's the back pieces that are working back here. But all together, it just very restricted. But it looks damn fantastic, so it's kind of a trade-off. There's also splits right here, so you can get the arm up and out of the robe. You do want to watch out right here. This layer is a separate piece, but it's, well, I just did it. It's pegged together. If you get too rowdy with it, it's going to come apart. But there you can, it's on this side too. If you want to go vintage Kenner with it, you can take the whole thing off and you have the under robes. That gives us the opportunity to third party big brown cloak it over if you want to do the changes there. Did they do that on purpose? Maybe? It works out that way. So uh, yeah, I appreciate that. You have this sculpted detail with all the pinholes on it coming down to, were those kind of metal or something? Some kind of hangy downs on the front. Have the studded bracer going around the wrist and then just more blue robe all the way around up to a turtleneck. And it's above that where we get the head sculpt. And oh, look at this sinister bastard. I almost feel like the likeness, oh, look right there. That's very familiar. But I do feel like the likeness is kind of an amalgam between episode one bib and episode six bib. The skin tone seems off. It's not as fleshy as I feel like it should be. It still works, but I, I expect some paint jobs to pop up here in the near future. Because there's also the blue shading, which is kind of cool in a Here's blue working all the way around and it seems like one big figure and everything works together. It also seems unnatural. It's odd. Again, I expect repaints. But the sculpted detail is nice. It's got the wrinkles to the leku going all the way around. It's got the hangy downs. This one comes around and kind of twists around the neck. It's got these dangles, the ears poking out the sides and then up on top, the elongated head. I, everything looks good. I think it's more color choice that's getting to me than anything. Yeah, those do kind of flex around. If you wanted to heat these up or put them in different spots or something, that's not a problem. And I didn't even look at the legs. There's pants sculpt. It's almost a corduroy, which is appropriate for the time period. Going over articulation, dumbbell joint at the top, ball at the bottom. A lot of stuff going on here, but you can still look up, can still look down, and still do this. Looking side to side. Arm rotates all the way around, hinges out to 90. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up, goes back and forth. Swivel at the wrist, hinges in and out. There's no weapon here. Unless you count those fingernails. Woo! Ball joint hidden behind the sash. Good hula hooping. This is split all the way up to here, but this is only split to here. You're only going to get about right there. Back, out. <laughs> Does he take the wave? Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Hell of a range. Can go past his ass. It is thin right here, so if you push up too hard, 
you're gonna get some stress to the plastic. Rotation at the top of the ankle, hinge below that goes to there and right there. Forward facing pin for rocker. On some pointy boots, <laughs> there's a stuff all over this figure. For accessories, comes with several uh, cups. This one probably crunches down for hiking trips. This one's a little more elaborate around the outside. And then, uh, yeah, there's even a spot to pour stuff in. And then this one seems more Tupperware-y. But it's Jabba's Palace. If you have a Dio and there's tables around, people drinking, standing around, partying, whatever. Next up, let's get into Tython Boba Fett because... I already have a problem with them that you can see right through the window of the package with the soft goods just laying on it it's very uh uncle festerish and i just happen to have this i know it's bubble gum but that could be a light bulb huh but at this point boba fett had robes so this is completely appropriate it just lays kind of flat the tuscan type gear it is wrinkled to all hell i mean it's got all kinds of dynamic look to it and that aspect i would kind of like to see this sculpted but then we'd run into the bib fortuna effect where you could just stand there that's it so that works for the action aspect because all the secondary robes or under robes those are all sculpted plastic i'm going to attempt to take this off get a look at the body underneath it's kind of our first glimpse at what is under the boba fett armor that he eventually gets in this episode that kind of just lays over all this. You have the baggy top pants with a lot of wrinkles to it coming down to the spats that are bluish. I think I've had rain boots or work boots that kind of look like that before. The arm wraps working up to a baggy or sleeve and then this undershirt with the shoulders sticking out a bit. A very Tuscan type belt with these cartridges going across, I guess for the rifle, that would make sense, this one. Holster hanging down that looks, well, almost sheath-like, but it's big enough for the blaster and then the strap around the leg. I like that they put all of this under the soft goods, but then as we've seen with the deluxe, it's using some parts from this. So it's pulling double duty. This reddish color to the fingers underneath the grayish gloves, that color doesn't appear anywhere else on this figure. So it's nice they threw that in there. It's almost plum. Then there's the Tamura Morrison head. I don't know if this is the same head that's been popping up underneath clone trooper helmets. Maybe not. Doesn't that have hair? And even the bald one doesn't have these scars. Because the scars is what makes it unmistakably Boba Fett. Well, the scars aren't like super sculpted in. It's got a faint ridge right there and then you can kind of see it across the bridge of the nose. Overall, nice skin tone, but you can see the shininess of the photo reel that they tried to apply to the scars themselves. This may be one that I attempt to do some dull coating on, see what happens. As far as placement and everything, it all looks good. It's not Mayfeldish, but there is some articulation wonkiness down here at the legs. Well, I say wonkiness, there is some experimentation. How about that? There's this flap hanging down in front of the knee. It works, but also at the same time, it's jarring because of how different it is. It doesn't break up as much as I thought it would. I mean, that's a big honking joint right there, but in neutral position, it, well, you can see the cut. Of course, it's an action figure. I get it. I know. It's kind of well hidden. Then they kind of did the same with the elbows, with the bagginess hanging down behind it to where it doesn't break as much, but it suffers in the range department. Oh, and that's well hidden behind there too. <laughs> I'm liking this more than I thought I would, except for the fact, although I'm looking through the screen right now, this does look very, very dark, but it is brown. And overall, this costume should be black. I think that's the biggest negative I can come up with. Going over articulation, oh, uh, guess. You are correct. It is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball down at the bottom. This collar piece does get in the way, though. You gotta kind of shift around, maybe up, down, if you get the chin into there, about right there. Not bad tilt for a turtleneck, though. Look inside to side. A look at that. This piece is a rubber overlay. There's actually a butterfly joint under that. Get some force forward, some back, rotation all the way around, it flexes out of the way. Hinge up, hinge and swivel at the elbow, comes to here and then rotates. Yawn twist at thine wrist, and up and down hinge for a trigger finger hand. Not bad hula hoop, hidden behind the belt. Ball joint at the hip, comes forward, goes back, out, holster in the way, what's out over here? Eh, not shabby. Cut at the thigh, swivels, hinge and swivel at the knee, comes up past 90, swivels in and out, swivel at the top of the boot, hinge at the ankle, goes all the way back. Forward about there, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Accessories comes with the blaster that we see several times in the series. In my mind, this is already specifically Boba Fett's blaster. Fits into the hand 
very nicely and then there's no trigger guard so twist but it also goes into this holster no problem there's also this gaffy stick i don't think it's the same as the one we got with the tuscan raider because that pulled apart even though it is the same basic shape it has this cord i guess to sling over his shoulder and there's this rifle that we also associate with the tuscan raiders a lot or I guess farm boy Luke. The Tuscans usually have the silver stuff. This has some gold highlights to it. Then you have the scope up on top. Also this rubbery piece that's just kind of stuck on there. So you can sling that over his shoulder too. Oh wait, in fact, well if Mayfeld's grip wasn't so damn rough, I'd get in there. But didn't he fire this in one of the episodes? And then to finish off the wave, the one I was honestly most excited to get, Fennec Shan, because you can use her for Mandalorian. You can use her for Book of Boba Fett. You can use her for Bad Batch. Am I going to end up with another one of these at some point? Because gaze upon this. She just looks like a badass. The black in the orange is just so beautiful. And it is mostly black, which makes us automatically think, oh, she kicks ass. But the orange plays so nicely within the black, especially when there's different sheens to that. Up here, it's a shinier black, but then it goes duller for the more cloth like parts of the costume, I guess. This is an undershirt of some kind. Well, the belt is shiny too, but then dull. And what I'm now picking up that I have it in hand and looking closer, there's so many textures going on. The lower sash has these, well, the triangle with the lines coming across, but then there's diamonds with all kinds of sculpted detail to it. So much geometry. Then we get to here and it's overlaid like a woven pattern. Move up over the belt with its horizontal lines to this and... That's so small, I need to get even closer. But it's broken up with the wrinkles and going around straps and stuff. That moves over to here where there's waves. And then the back detail moving up and over. Well, the pants underneath, at least, are fairly plain until you get to here. Does that match the texture from up here? And you get down to the boots and it has the orange seams going across down to here. And a strap up over the foot. Also, this armor plate on the back of the right elbow. Is that for, like sniper position or something is that to oh well no it's up on the back of the upper arm i don't know what this is but it has an orange dot on it the only way this could look better is if this opened up and showed some cybernetics or something there's another techno looking box down here at the belt with another orange button and some silver it all comes down to the likeness again it's not 100 percent perfect but it's damn close. Does skew a bit more shiny. Still looks like Fennec Shan. I also like how they incorporated the orange up into the hair. And it even comes down the ponytail. Not as distinct as up here, but there's some orange hint to it. I mean, just look at this. Even if you're not into Star Wars, this is just a good looking figure. I will say these are a bit thicker than I feel like they should be. They're going to get in the way of the legs, especially out. Maybe if I slice right here where it'll pop up. Oh no, that won't work because it's not split back here either. I say all that and it's it's not terrible. You can still kick forward and out and get around. Speaking of articulation, you want to take a swing at what we have at the neck? Umbell joint with the ball at the bottom. Up, down. Yeah, that collar piece is rubbery. It is going to get out of the way. Ooh, rotation. Arm rotates around. Yeah, he can flex into it. Hinges out. Hinges swivel at the elbow. Comes up past 90. And then rotates. Turn at the hand. Trigger finger for the right. Hinge up and down. Ball joint mid torso. Good range. Ball coming out to the hip. Comes forward. Back about there. Out. Rotation at the thigh. Hinge and swivel at the knee comes up to about right there. And then that rotates. Hinge at the ankle. Oh, goes back, forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, there is her signature helmet, the blacks, the oranges. Bring that silver in again right there. Little dirt into the edges of it. Give it a bit of age. Tight fit, but you can get it to where you can see her eyes through the slot right there. Very nightlike. I guess I never noticed that in the show before. Comes with her sniper rifle. The sculpted detail running along. The big scope up on top. No paint to the actual gun, but they painted the strap black. And then, of course, you gotta bring the orange in. Sits on her shoulder very nicely. It's natural. It, it doesn't stick out. She can even hit a fairly nice sniper pose. The grip is one of those that are usually a pain in the ass to get the hand in, and it's not much different here, but thankfully her hands are fairly soft. Size-wise, you can see we're all over the place here, but we're supposed to be all over the place here. The shorter characters are shorter, the taller characters are taller. Bib stands about six and three eighths to the top of that skull. Dr. Avazin is about uh, five and 15 sixteenths. Ponda Baba is 
five and eleven sixteenths. Leia stands at about five and a quarter up to the top of her head. Fennec Shan is about five and three eighths. Boba is about five and thirteen sixteenths. Mayfeld is slightly under six inches, and then the stormtrooper is right on six inches. Here's the Mandalorian characters with the uh, the end of season one Mandalorian, and then here's the Boba Fett characters with the Hasbro Black Series Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, and then I can't remember if this is the archive or the original Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. If you want to use Fennec in your Bad Batch display, here she is with Cad Bane and Hunter. Here's Leia with a couple of Hasbro Black Series Leias and then the SH Figuarts Leia. Dr. Avazan and Ponda Baba have no trouble giving the SH Figuarts Luke Skywalker trouble. You'll be dead! And then this just works. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I'm not even going to lie to you. It is amazing to get this many new Star Wars figures into the display all at the same time. Eight unique characters in one case. I should probably already have Ponda Baba and Dr. Avazan on the shelf from that Cantina showdown, but I have them now. That's all that matters, right? I will never gripe about a Stormtrooper, especially one that comes with all kinds of extra gear. With the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi right around the corner, I gotta think we're gonna get more Jabba's Palace characters, right? I mean, we have Bib now. Let's build around them. Not the version of Mayfeld I wanted. I still want the jailbreak one. And I'm still wondering if it's just mine that has that warp to it. I'm, I'm hoping they're not all like that. Also not the most exciting version of Leia. And how long did she actually wear this costume compared to others? But still a needed Leia. It seems like every Leia we've gotten, it's been... Okay, a little bit better here, a little bit better here, a little bit better here, to the point where I want them to go back and redo some of the older ones. And then finally, Boba Fett and Fennec Shand. I love The Mandalorian. I'm looking forward to Book of Boba Fett. I was ready for these figures. It's a shame that Boba Fett's not in the black robes. So that means Fennec Shand is my favorite of the wave. I'm hoping, if I get another Mayfeld, that the head doesn't look as, you know, slothy. And then I can take this one, pull this head off, find a Mando head, Put it on here just in time for hasbro to release their own you know what i mean maybe a cloth robe for bib a black cloth robe for boba but the rest oh right on the shelf if you enjoyed this overview comment like subscribe much much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel patreon.com but wherever you may be watching this i'll always catch you on the foosh and again i'll point it out customizing is part of the fun for me don't take that as a negative whenever I say that during a review. Or, well, I guess if you don't care for that kind of stuff, it would be a negative. But for me, a couple of these things, it's a good start, a good base. I don't know, Bib could go in there just like that. So could Migs. But Boba, yeah, that's a pretty big misstep.